He is a world-renowned bassist. A lot of you would recognize him in New Orleans. You would recognize him in Manhattan and on Long Island, but he is known worldwide. He has recorded and performed with some of the greats, and he is such an intricate part of shaping the next generation of musicians. We are so happy to introduce you to Sly Gerald. Sly, welcome to Good Talk. Oh, hey. Thank you, Robin. Thanks for having me. <laughs> It's really a pleasure. You're very welcome. We're going to get to a couple of things with you. I know that you've got a really big project that you just kicked off here on Long Island that involves kids, and we're going to get to that. But first, tell us a little bit about you and how you started out and uh, what you've been up to. Well, I've been, a, I've been a musician all my life, basically, from the age of like nine. Uh, started off as a drummer, ended up uh, becoming a bass player uh, and, uh, and basically right out of high school I went on tour uh, toured with Richie Havens late Richie Havens for and toured with him for a while uh, played with we uh, got to play a couple gigs with Levon Helm and uh, played a little bit with Al Green Cindy Lauper then I uh, went back to school uh, and got my undergrad, uh, and, uh, and started teaching, started, started, uh, I actually started teaching as an adjunct and, and as a TA for one of my teachers in, uh, at Juilliard in the jazz program and, uh, kind of got bitten by the bug, you know, kind of seeing kids like figure out who they are, you know, through their instruments. And, you know, it just, uh, and, and went from there. I started, started doing, started dedicating a lot of time to teaching and uh, doing a bunch of that, you know, so. I've been able to experience your students firsthand. And it is incredible how they are able to hone their skills, hone their passions and have the confidence some of these kids are up there and they're playing with a level of confidence that I don't see with some of the adults our age, you know, because you help them believe that they can. You help them channel their own power and creativity. And as we were talking about earlier, you're literally taking the next generation to the next level. Um, tell us about some of your highlights with having the kids going out and sharing their music. Well, you know, the most, uh, the most recent one that I had is, uh, you, you're familiar with, uh, with uh, Brandon Niederauer, right? Yes. Taz. Taz. So Taz was in my program uh, in, in the school that I was teaching. He was in my after school program uh, at the age of nine. And even at nine, he kind of, he showed, you know, you know, a lot of times, you know, some kids are just standouts. generally believe that if you give them a platform to perform, they're going to rise to the occasion, you know, and, uh, and, and the joy I got is I got to see it come full circle. Uh, Taz did a concert. He did a, he did a, a, a concert right in Hot Pot for us, but it's just to see this kid, I remember him as a little nine-year-old to be now the ripe old age of he's, he's 18 now, you know, and, you know, he's got to play with people like, uh, you know, BB King and, and, uh, you know, uh, Dwayne Allman, I'm not Dwayne, uh, Greg Allman rather, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, many other great blues legends. Without ever making back where I Uh, 
and they consider him, and he stands toe-to-toe with guys that are like three times his age. And it's, it's amazing to see. It's amazing to see these kids. The thing I love the most is the transformation. Like when a, when a, when a, when a kid figures out, hey, man, I sound good on this. I like what I sound like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, nine times that he goes, you know, and then like he gets bitten by, they, he or she gets bitten by that bug and they go, you know, I, maybe I could do something with this. You know what I mean? Like maybe this, you know, and it becomes like a creative force in their life, you know. And, and, you can see and them hope. open up and blossom. If I can do yeah. this, what else can I do? You know, yeah. how far can I take this? Can I challenge myself? And can I get past the limitations that I set on myself? Right. It's and, believing you know, in possibilities. Right. The sky's the limit, man. If you can, I always say to my kids, I say to them, I say, if you can hear what you want to sound like, you'll get there. He said, the biggest challenge is to hear what you want to sound like, you know, not necessarily sounding like, you know, B.B. Uh, King or sounding like Joe Satriani or whatever, you know, but like, what, what do you envision what you, you sound like, like what your voice is going to be? And then go for that, you know, because, you know, as you at- attain that goal, your vision of yourself is going to move forward. Like you're, like, you're never going to, you're never, if you're good, you're never going to be satisfied with where you're at. You're always going to be striving for something, you know, even B.B. King, I keep going back to B.B. King, but even, you know, to the grave, he was always trying to re- refine what he did in, in his voice, believe it or not. You know, um, well, it wasn't like he reached the, the, his destination and he goes, okay, that was good enough. There was always a way to explore and expand and improve and learn and grow. And that's a lesson for all of us. You know, a lot of times people will get to a certain point and they go, okay, all right, I'm good. I accomplished it and that's it. Now you may be done with whatever it is that you were working on and, and ready to move on to something else. But, but keeping the possibility open of being able to grow, even somebody as BB King after his career and his talent and everything, I, it, there's a strong lesson there, I think. It is, I think so. So I guess what I'm doing now, I'm, I, um, I've always done band things. Like I've always done like uh, quote unquote band coaching. And now I'm over at the school of rock. <laughs> now that just, that just opened. You just, this is a brand new project that's happening in Port Jefferson, New York, right? Correct. It's it just opened. I, I just started this month there uh, going into the new semester and I'm doing what I've always done. Uh, and basically taking a group of kids, kind of handpicked, uh, taking a group of, group of kids and putting them in a band situation mm-hmm. and letting them explore their, you know, original talent, like writing. We, we, we cover songwriting. We cover, you know, all the, all the things that you would, that you would see happen in, in a, you know, basically, we take it out of the garage put it in a rehearsal studio where it can be, where we can give them avenues to, uh, I, you know, where they can uh, develop, you know, develop, develop their, 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 their uh, musician capability as well as their songwriting capability. You know, That's fantastic. And, it's so important to be able to work together in that type of setting, because even as a solo performer, if they decide to go out on their own, there may be times where they're going to need to work with other people and involve other musicians and stuff. And it's just, it's base knowledge that's really going to help them in the long run. That's terrific. I think so. So I'm really happy that folks at School of Rock have given me this opportunity, which is not normal for them. They, they, they created this program and, and, and let me come and do my thing, you know? So I was really, really happy about that, you know? That's uh, terrific. Now you've taken your students overseas, correct? Correct. In the past, I've uh, uh, taken, we've, there's been uh, um, like jazz competitions. We, we did, uh, we did, uh, there's a Munich Jazz Festival that we did. Um, there's also, we did a, uh, uh, the uh, Jazz Educators Forum, where all the jazz, ed- it's, a, it's, a, it's a, basically a convention of all the jazz educators in the world. And uh, we did we did one in Canada with them. 
and I took a group of kids there. Uh, I also took a group of kids to Russia. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, you know, obviously, you know, the whole idea is to really kind of. You know, I believe that if a kid gets on a plane with their instrument and goes and plays for somebody else that's not mom and dad, it changes them. It changes the way they look at their instrument and they look at the possibilities of how they can impact the world. Because the kids that I took that got on the plane at JFK came back, the kids that came back were different, more focused, more like saying like, wow. You know, we just played, whether they played for 50 people or they played for a thousand people, you know, they still, the fact of the matter is, is that they're out of their natural environment. And mm -hmm. it's not, you know, normally a lot of times when kids play out, it's mom, dad, grandma, aunts and uncles, girlfriend, friends, that kind of thing. You go to somebody where they know nobody and most of all, don't speak the language. And they get up there, and, mu and, and music is commutative, right? You know, it's a commutative thing. Like, so it's, it's, uh, it crosses all boundaries and all, and all borders and all, you know, nationalities and, and that kind of thing. So I totally agree. They don't have to speak Russian, and they are communicating fluently with everybody that was there. Right. And the beautiful thing about it was, is when they played, they had to play with Russian musicians as well. So there was like one interpreter in the room with us, but like why I'm working with one section, the other, you know, the, with working with the rhythm section, the horn section had to get together and work. And they had to like figure out through their, you know, through the Russians broken English or whatever in, 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 the, in, in the probably piecemeal Russian that the kids were trying to learn because they were getting ready for this trip. You know, taking a crash course online of you know, speaking Russian, you know. It's not easy. But, but, but they worked it out, and they sounded great. And the fact of the matter is, is they got to, you know, different cultures. It's just like, you know, music is a great vehicle. You know, if, if more people played music, I think we could heal the world, you know. You know, if you're playing an instrument, you can't go to war, you know, that kind of thing, you know. So well said. Hey everyone, it's Bobby Lacerra from Paradise Studios and Strong Island Television. And I just love having a good talk with Robin Eve and Donnie Vega. This is Motorcycle Mike, the personal injury lawyer. I've been riding motorcycles my entire adult life. During the course of my 30 year career as a lawyer, I've also represented countless injured motorcyclists. If you are one of them, I can be of assistance to you. Go to my website, please, MotorcycleMikeESQ.com. I'll always be there for you. I'm on your side when you ride. Joe DeJesu, our original artist of the week from Good Talk TV Show Season 1, has a brand new release available that you want to download on all of your digital media platforms. Another Sacrifice is the highly anticipated follow-up single to Cry and Miss Maybe released in 2019. Joe is also the host of Jam Acoustic Mondays on Govs Radio. Please follow Joe DeJesu Music on Facebook and Instagram and download Another Sacrifice today. The thing I love the most is the transformation. Like, 
when a, when a, when a, when a kid figures out, hey, man, I sound good on this. I like what I sound like. And, you know, nine times that he goes, you know, and then like he gets bitten by, they, he or she gets bitten by that bug and they go, you know, I, maybe I could do something with this. You know what I mean? Like maybe this, you know, and it becomes like a creative force in their life, you know. And, and, you can see and them open, open up and blossom. If I can do yeah. this, what else can I do? You know, how far can I take this? Can I challenge myself? And can I get past the limitations that I set on myself? Right. It's and believing you know, in possibilities. Right. The sky's the limit, man. If you can, I always say to my kids, I say to them, I say, if you can hear what you want to sound like, you'll get there. He said, the biggest challenge is to hear what you want to sound like, you know, not necessarily sounding like, you know, B.B. Uh, King or sounding like Joe Satriani or whatever, you know, but like, what, what do you envision what you, you sound like, like what your voice is going to be? And then go for that, you know, because, you know, as you at attain that goal, your vision of yourself is going to move forward. Like, you, like you're never going to, you're never, if you're good, you're never going to be satisfied with where you're at. You're always going to be striving for something, you know, even B.B. King, I keep going back to B.B. King, but even, you know, to the grave, he was always trying to re refine what he did in, in his voice, believe it or not. You know, um, well, it wasn't like he reached the, the, his destination and goes, okay, that was good enough. There was always a way to explore and expand and improve and learn and grow. I've always done band things. Like I've always done like uh, quote unquote band coaching. And now I'm over at the school of rock. <laughs> now that just, that just opened. You just, this is a brand new project that's happening in Port Jefferson, New York, right? Correct. It's it just opened. I, I just started this month there uh, going into the new semester and I'm doing what I've always done. Uh, and basically taking a group of kids, kind of handpicked, uh, taking a group, a group of kids and putting them in a band situation mm -hmm. and letting them explore their, you know, original talent, like writing, we, we, we cover songwriting, we cover, you know, all the, all the things that you would, that you would see happen in, in a, you know, basically, we take it out of the garage put it in a rehearsal studio where it can be, where we can give them avenues to, uh, I, you know, where they can uh, develop, you know, develop, develop their, 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 their uh, musician capability as well as their songwriting capability. Now, outside of you shaping and molding and changing the lives of all of these kids and you playing with these legendary musicians and you ripping up your own stuff. It's you also are a singer songwriter. You have your own music that you have managed to make time to create and to put out there. So anybody that wants to listen to anything that you have done in the past, they can check out Sly Gerald's band anywhere that you stream, but you're currently working on your own next album. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I, um, I'm working on an album, uh, it's on this instrument that I have here. This, this is a, this is a Chapman stick where I'm playing. I can play, basically play bass and melody at the same time. Thing. But anyway, I but I, so I uh, wrote a bunch of music uh, and really kind of leaning into the uh, kind of blues, R&B and soul funk thing. And it's, the, it's uh, me playing this and singing with a drums and a sax player. <laughs> wow. So it's really kind of streamlining, kind of cool, little, little very rootsy you know, stripped down stuff, which, which is, uh, which is cool, kind of exploring the whole improvisational end of it. And, uh, you know, just, it, it's been fun trying to write 
for this. I've, I've written a lot for other people. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time really in a long time getting back to writing just for myself and write and particularly writing for this instrument, you know, so. I can't wait. I actually, uh, from our friends of the show, Tommy and Janine, I got to meet the person who invented the Chapman stick about two years ago at KJ Farrell's in Belmore. And I've never experienced an instrument like that. There isn't one that exists. Um, no. the sounds that come out of it are beautiful. And it just seems like a perfect pairing um, that you would take this on and you would involve this in the project. I can't wait to hear it. If anybody yeah. wants to see what's going on with that, when it's going to be released, uh, you'll have information on slidegeralds.com. Correct. I just finished one cut and uh, I think I'm going to release it early just to kind of like a teaser, you know, yeah. so kind of get it out there to folks and see how they, how they like I, it. I agree with that idea. Now it's a poll. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yay. So we're going to share a video of yours. Uh, what are we going to be sharing? Uh, it's going to be live at the uh, Riverhead Blues Festival back in 2010. It's a while ago. It's, it's my big band. So it's, uh, we're going to, a song called Talk to Me, Baby. And it's, it's great. It features some of Long Island's best musicians, too. And so I'm really happy. It's, it, it was a fun day. It was hot, and, but it was great. The, the, and the audience was great. I hope they, you know, once this COVID thing ends, I hope they bring back some of these great Long Island festivals, like like the Great South Bay and Riverhead Blues Festival, you know, because uh, that's what Long Island's about during the summer, is the festivals and places to go out and see live music, you know. Absolutely, down by the water, everywhere. Everybody's out playing, you sit there having some clams. <laughs> Right. Now I'm pick, now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know. Give me feedback. Hit me up on Facebook. You know, if you let me know what you what you think, what you feel, and uh, we'll love to get your opinion uh, on the music. That's awesome. I definitely will. You know, I'm going to check that out. Sly, thank you so much for sitting down and having a good talk with us. We're so happy that our viewers got to meet you and learn what you were about. We want them to support what you are doing with the School of Rock in Port Jefferson, New York. Make sure that you look that up online and share it with some friends that are in the area that you think that will benefit from what Sly is putting together. It is next level for the next generation. Sly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Appreciate it.
from the New York Bee Gees and from Riot. And we love having a good talk with Robin Eve and Donnie Vapor. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Writing a book is the adventure of a lifetime. Red Penguin Books take pride in giving our authors a publishing experience that is stress-free and celebratory all the way. Some of our authors first approach us with no more than an idea for a book that's ready to sprout. Others submit completed manuscripts. Whether you're at either end or anywhere in between, our goal is to get you published. At Red Penguin Books, we offer options and opportunities that are unique in the world of publishing, and all of them are designed to keep you, the author we so deeply respect, in the driver's seat, unlike other publishing houses. So, if you want to write a book and are looking for a publisher, we've got you covered. Red Penguin Books deal in publishing services, book development, and ghostwriting for digital, print, and audiobook. Call us at 516-448 4993 or visit our website www.redpenguinbooks.com Hey everybody, we have a friend that just dropped by to Robin Eve and Donnie Vapor's neighborhood if you would to say hello and his name is Mr. Jeff Blight, and uh, you guys might know of him from a little band that he co-founded called Dexy's Midnight Runners. Uh, one big hit that comes to mind of everybody's head would be Come On Eileen. He also worked in uh, TKO, which is a horn section that worked with Elvis Costello, Black 47, and Jeff's played with just numerous, numerous people. He's here to have a good talk with us, and he couldn't be happier. What's going on, Jeff? How are you? Hey, nice to see you both, Don, Robin, Eve. Lovely. Um, very happy to be here. Oh. It's really great to see you. Yeah. Thanks for doing it. This is Tom. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. All righty, so let's jump right in. We'll say hello. We'll talk about... Uh, last time we all got together was the date. We were just reminiscing about that, that we started doing Good Talk with Robin, Eve, the, the actual television show. We went, we all played a gig together at a place called Buckley's. And uh, Robin and I had our set, and uh, Jeff was playing with, uh, was it the uh, the Buzzards, I believe? It was the Buzzards, yeah. It was a rockabilly setup. It was great. Yeah. And then we all kind of met that day. It was the same day we just signed the paperwork to have this television show. And now we are in, believe it or not, Jeff, season three. Wow. Congratulations. Isn't that amazing? Thank you. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about uh, the stuff that you've done. Let people get to know you a little bit. I guess start back with uh, the Dexies Midnight Runners. Tell us about that. Uh, briefly, yes. Uh, the, 
Most people over here don't know the original Dexys Midnight Runners, which was a soul band to the horn section or, or based on soul music. My first ever professional playing was done with this guy, Gino Washington, who was a transplanted American soul singer, did all the like Sam and Dave shoes and stuff like that when these artists weren't coming over to the UK. So he, made, he was quite big for a time. Gino Washington, the Ram Jam man, played with him, was looking for a band, advert in the local Birmingham paper said, um, you know, forming new new wave slash soul bands influences Gina Washington. So, oh, so I thought, I'll call that up. And so we formed together, you know, a lot, a lot of, a uh, lot, a lot of rehearsing, formed a completely original, like, soul-based sound with the horns. I designed the horn sound. It's one of the arrangements. I designed the sound which comes specifically for it. Different way of doing arrangements. And, uh, you know, we had a hit album. We had... Uh, three top 20 singles one of them Gino was the number one that kept Paul McCartney at number two which was <laughs> kind of you know fun yeah. so <laughs> a little yeah sure sure that's pretty cool and then you also I uh, mentioned uh, you were involved with a uh, a horn section called TKO yes uh, the trombone player in Dexys who actually co-wrote Come on Eileen my good friend Big Jimmy um, we'd sort of split apart after a while, uh, going our separate ways. And I bumped into him on a train. He said, oh, look, I've got this gig. You want to be part of it? And it was um, playing with Elvis Costello, the horn section. Sure. Elvis likes to do something different every year. He'll make an album at the beginning of the year, tour to at least that was the way with the attractions, and tour for the rest of the year to promote it. And he would like a different, you know, he's had like country and western based ones, you know, some... It has a different approach. This is more of a big bandy kind of thing, hence the horns. And we had some, you know, fantastic girl singers and then backing singers. The album was called Punch the Clock. And so we recorded the album. This was 83, I believe. And we toured, you know, Europe and America um, for the rest of the year, right up until uh, Christmas. Uh, wow. Support the album. Great, great. That was a wonderful year. We knew it was just going to be for the one year because then the next time he would go and do something different. But it was absolutely... Uh, Really, really fantastic, yeah. Because he's, he's changed his music a lot. I don't think, yeah, know. he does. He does. That's what I'm saying. He does he like that. Music is yeah. quite interesting. He changes, he yeah. 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 And then you came over and we talk about uh, talk about Black 47. What a big band. Black 47, yeah, it was a great band. It's very interesting. When I first joined them, again, it was like, it was only just starting off, really. It started off with... Uh, uh, Larry Cohen and Chris Byrne, just the two of them initially, and then people sort of gravitated into it. Um, my wife at the time bumped into Larry in a park and said, oh, you know, my husband, Jeff Sax player, I'd only been over for a few years, you know, from the UK, so looking for something to do. He said, oh, come on, you know, have him come down and sit in. So they actually took me to one of their first gigs in the Rockaways, an open air gig, and I'm sitting there not knowing what's going, you know, I, I have no idea, I didn't even, we never rehearsed or anything, right? So. I'm standing there, tennis slung around my neck. They start playing all these dee dilly 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 dee, you know, and then sort of like reels and jigs, and I'm just looking around and what the hell am I going to do with this? <laughs> sort of. But I eventually got through it, and I eventually learned all these tunes, and sort of, you know, and it was so, it was sort of, would have always kind of switch between being very rock and rolly when I'd use a tenor and much more like traditional sounding when I use a soprano a lot. And, um, right. You know, um, it was um, we tw over twenty years we were together. You know? That's amazing. We, I guess, we yeah. could describe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I guess Black Forty Seven is a a hard driving Celtic rock and roll band. If you yes, will. exactly. Yes, that is very, exactly very what it is. Cool. Yes, with, with great recognition, especially yeah. I mean, all over, especially New York. Well, it was a great live band. I mean, I don't think you know it. It um, it, it was primarily a live band, I and mean, I don't think that magic of us live was ever captured on on record. To be honest with you. There's so much energy. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. That explains why everybody is talking to you about playing with them because yeah. you just named like five different genres <laughs> already, yeah. and and you're that guy. You can play funk and blues and jazz and rock and whatever it is, and then you tie all of this all together and produce your own projects, which are just impressive and lovely. Really, really lovely. It's just me doing it, but but the lead singers from Samsonite Gypsies. I'm using the the Mems, fantastic, you know, soul R and B singer. Yeah, she is. And uh, what it is, this is 20 years since the release of our Dexys Midnight Runners album, Searching for the Young Soul Rebels, which spawned a bunch of hits, including a number one that kept Paul McCartney out of number one. 
in the UK. And um, <laughs> so, and uh, this is the one song I co-wrote with a friend of mine, Kevin Archer. And I wanted to, there's a whole long story. I wanted to do a reimagining of it. So I turned it into sort of like a stack, solely semi-reggae kind of thing and wanted to release it over there. Uh, vinyl, vinyl singles are getting very popular in the UK now. My daughter has a big vinyl collection and yeah. she adds to that on a regular yeah. basis. I know. I mean, the albums too, but I think, you know, people are like, do, people are doing a lot of singles over there now. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, the publishers actually, uh, Sony ATV and the publishing guy in the UK, he loves it. He absolutely loves it. But, you know, but it's still kind of hard to get it put out there, but I'm determined to do it. But, you know, I just got the last final, final of all the final, final, final versions from um, the mastering guy, the producer, James Nichols. And, uh, uh, yesterday, so. Where's so, you know, you... it recorded? In, uh, over the, across the pond? Or no, 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 no. Oh, it's, uh, it's, re it's recorded in Deer Park. My, <laughs> my, fr my friend Tommy Stiegler's that got a block bl Blockhead Studios. Stop. I love Tommy Stiegler. He's you know one of my Tom? favorite yes. people on the He's a friend and he is one of my favorite people on the planet. Yeah, me we too. actually, we filmed, we had a tribute to tribute artist, Moonflower mm -hmm. Spirit of Santana, back in the second season and we filmed that was our last in like on location interview right. before covid kicked in and we started doing this and, and i interviewed moonflower at blockhead studios wow yes i've done uh, i've done a bunch of stuff there i did a uh, my gi blythe album i recorded there that was with oh, half, the fantastic. half the people on that were from the uk actually they flew over for it but wow because of the covid thing a lot of it was recorded remotely Mm -hmm. The only people that were in the studio at the same time were myself and Tommy, you know, and uh, Tom played the drums on it. So, um, like Tony Shanahan from uh, Paddy Smith on bass, but he did it at his own studio in Hoboken. Um, Bob Perry on guitar, he, he recorded that in Jersey. Uh, Mem the singer, um, who's the singer on this, who's the, the female singer on Samsonite Gypsies, mm -hmm. uh, partners really husband but they're not married i guess is is james p nichols who mastered this he's a grammy award-winning producer so yeah. um so you know they did that at their place in uh, south jersey so you know the whole thing was done and uh, dave amels did hammond keyboards on it he did his wherever he did his i don't even know <laughs> i send these things to people and it it's a kind of a lengthy process but it worked out really well i'm really pleased with the result well you wait till you hear it anyways what is the name of the single it's called Keep It. And where is it going to be available? Um, well, when we get around finally get it out, it'll be available on the usual suspects, you know, like uh, CD Baby, iTunes, you know, the usual, that, all that stuff. But I want it, it's primarily I made it for the UK market. I want it released as vinyl in the UK. What about here? I don't know. But it will always be available on, uh, as I say, all the usual all the usual platforms, you know. Sure. And with the sale of the vinyl, will that be available on jeffblythe.com? Um, one hopes so, yes. Thank you, Pulmonary Wellness Foundation, Good Talk TV sponsor. Please visit pulmonarywellness.com to learn more about this incredible organization. released not that long ago an album with Samsonite Gypsies. Yes, and, uh, uh, Samsonite Gypsies is very interesting. We have the one album that's out, um, which is just a self-titled -title album. It's called Samsonite Gypsies. Mm -hmm. You will be able to find some, um, so on, some of the tracks are on YouTube and do have like a little video to go with them.
But my favorite song to play would be called Down the Street off the first album. The other thing is we have a second album, which isn't finished yet, which is uh, we went and recorded last year in North Carolina. Um, same same lineup uh, um, with James producing. And uh, it's not been, I mean, we've all the parts have been finished and everything like that. Just waiting for James very, basically to finish the production and the mastering. And I think this is absolutely stunning album. Can't wait to hear it. Um, but, you know, um, it's, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, come on, James, finish it. I mean, you know, James and Manwood did my single. In the meantime, this is stuff had been done, like, you know, as far as we were concerned, way before that. So I um, can't wait for it to come out. So I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I've known Pat McGuire, who, you know, started Samsonite Gypsies for many, many, many years, you know, when I was in um, Black 47. And, mm -hmm. and he and I, we, we were both knocking around the same circuit, you know. So I've known each other for years. He's always said, you know, we've always kind of wanted to work together, never could because, of, you know, both of our commitments. And so he, you know, he couldn't wait to start Samsonite Gypsies and brought me into that. And um, Mem and James came with him. I'd never met them before. Um, and uh, so the first album is really kind of like sort of Pat McGuire songs, almost like a Pat McGuire band, but with us sort of thing. I mean, Mem and James had worked mm -hmm. on his, his stuff before. The new album had really taken on its uh, character of its own to become its own animal. It had really become the Samsonite Gypsies, not sort of a version of the Pat McGuire band. And it's phenomenal. It's a lot more kind of sort of jazzy, sort of soulful, sort of a lot of improvised stuff. And, and you know, you know, mixes from like real soulful. Mem doing a lot more of the songs, you know, like as, as lead vocals. And, uh, you know, sort of some of my favorite sax playing I've done in years, actually. I like, loved it. It was, it was so cool recording it, you know? Yeah. That is really cool. I can't wait to hear it. What we love yeah. about Samsonite Gypsies is because it's an international project yeah. and you have people from all over the place, those influences are so profound. And when yeah. you guys all come together, it just layers the song so beautifully mm. with all of those different influences. And, and it's really, it's something that we're excited about. We love the first album. Uh, my personal favorite is Water. I love Oh, yes. I just, I love that song. I've played that over and over. It kind of mm. makes, let me do the groove thing, which I always enjoy doing yeah, as our viewers know. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Blue Jay Jive, too. I like that one, too. Oh, you, you do? You, yeah, love my, do? you love my little Blue Jay tunes. I, do. I, I know, that, that never went neat. anywhere, but I, I love doing that. It was just like, oh. that was basically me, like, multi-tracking saxes and, and a couple of other people playing along with it and stuff. And I just loved doing that. You know, yeah, that, it was, that few, stood out to me. Tunes. I enjoyed that. <laughs> nice. I'm glad you like it, Robin. I'm, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm surprised you heard it. I'm surprised you even know it, actually, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, it's, it's our job to know it. We want to know who we're talking about. And when, we're, when we enjoy what you do, that just makes us, as, as Don and I yeah. often say, it makes us go down the rabbit hole. That's fantastic. Oh, we love what he did here. We love what he did yeah. here. What else did he do? And then we start like, looking the from there. The <laughs> keep going. It's great. I love the rabbit hole. Yeah, uh, me too. Go bless down there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, before Samson Lake Gypsies, uh, towards the end of um, Black 47 also, I did have my own album called G.I. Blythe. The name of the albums, G.I. Blythe is my, sort of what my cover name for the band. The album's called Lost in Space. I don't know if you've heard this album at all. Did you believe so, what you just said? I'm sorry, I don't mean that. Um, I, I, had a, I made an album called Lost in Space. Uh -huh. uh, under the G.I. Wait, hold Blythe. on, Jeff. Pause right there for one second because Don is going to laugh. This is crazy. <laughs> This is our second interview today. Yes. We, this we is the Randy second Jackson. time Lost in Space has come up today. Really? Who were you talking and to? Randy Jackson from Zebra. Are you familiar with Zebra? Ah. And Randy Jackson, we, Robin asked him a question. Of, you know, he's been around for so long. Anybody ever blow his mind who he's played with? He talked about playing with Jefferson Airplane. Ah. And like, <laughs> nobody really blew my mind, but in the crowd of this Jefferson Airplane gig was uh, June Lockhart. He goes, do you know who June Lockhart is? I go, oh, oh, right. he goes, Lost in Space. I went, Lost in Space, Will Robinson, Robot. And you just said, <coughs> Lost in Space, you can't make this up. No, it's funny. It's pretty odd. I'm playing the lottery. I have to, sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. So tell us about Lost in Space. That was uh, an album I made also with big, my friend Big Jimmy. He flew over the lead singer for the Bureau, Archie Band. It was a band mm -hmm. I had after Dex's, directly after Dex's. And... Uh, 
great drummer from England, Crispin Taylor, and a bunch of local guys too. And it's an absolutely fantastic album. It was, I sort of wanted to get back to the original Dexys thing with very much a horn driven, uh, horn led thing. You'd see um, a good example of it actually is if you look on my website, you get the, uh, the vampire tune. It's called The Narrative of G. Bristol Groot Vampire. Mm. And there's a video on my website, which is cut, a friend of mine cut it from, um, from the old, you know, Nos 20, no, 1922 Nosferatu. Sure. Movie. So she did that. She did a bit of like scribbling over the top of it. It's, have a look at that video. It's very, very interesting. I mean, it's available on YouTube and everything, but... Uh, I'm intrigued just by the name alone. So yeah, we're gonna oh, check it's, it out. It's, yeah, again, it's it's a really funny song. It's well, it's not a funny song actually. It's a really kind of groovy, funky song. But if you're gonna listen to one thing that kind of sums up what the GI Blythe was all about, that would be it. Wow. So have a have a listen to that song. I check it out on the website. Uh, Narrative of G Bristol Groot Vampire, spelt with a Y. To make it sort of more vintage. So I love it. It was, it was the you know that was like the 19th century spelling of vampire was with a Y. So. Not an eye. I love that. And so that was that. And then, uh, you know, after that, Samsonite Gypsies and Plant with Roy. And, you know, waiting on the second Samsonite Gypsies album. All go, isn't it? Except I seem to sit around a <laughs> lot sort of and keep it. I wrote with uh, my friend Kevin Archer uh, back in the old Dexys days. It was on the original Searching for the Young Soul Rebels album released in 1980. And I've always, it's a great tune, and I always wanted to redo this tune. So I'm redoing this with uh, the wonderful Memna Hard from Samsonite Gypsies, uh, singing a very like soul R&B vocal on it. You know, changed up the rhythm, did the whole thing, and uh, and I'm really, really proud of the results. Has some great plays on it, like you know Tony Shanahan on bass from uh, from Paddy Smith and Tommy Stiegler's playing drums. You know, some great guys on this, um, which I will send to you afterwards. But yes, I'm very, very, very pleased with it. Very pleased. Fantastic, Jeff. Thank you so much for spending this time with us and for sharing your stories and sharing your music. We ask all of our viewers to please check out Jeff blythe.com you can check him out on social media as well and download his music there is something for absolutely everyone he's been involved in so many different projects and uh, you're gonna it's a nice rabbit hole to fall down uh, <laughs> like an onion multiple layers uh well versed i guess you could say I guess. very oniony very oniony yeah. yeah. very, very oniony yeah <laughs> very oniony <laughs> i'd like to throw a last question at you if i could Let's say, uh, you know, years from now, people uncover the body of uh, your work, the Jeff Blythe work. What would you like people to take from looking at all your work? Say the aliens came down and like, well, what's this? What would you like them to get from what you put together throughout your musical life? I think the passion and the, the originality of music that I've been involved with. I mean, I've been involved with various, you know, co uh, various, you know, co members, different bands of all different kinds of things. And, it's never we've never been derivative nothing i've ever done is derivative i've refused to play with anything i didn't think was really you know out, out of this world forward-looking creative I've, I've been offered those things and i have turned them down um so i think that it's a the difference of creativity i think everything we've done has changed music i mean dexy's midnight runner's original soul rebels thing definitely changed the course of pop music in the in the uk mm -hmm. i think black 47 changed the course of like you know sort of festival music in america you know and um you know everything i've done i've been very proud of it's been very original and very forward-looking and i think that's it that's a fantastic answer yeah. thank you for that appreciate that we got to thank Jeff for coming in and having a great talk with us. And we're going to throw to uh, the new song, which is uh, Keep It. We're Keep gonna put it. That up here, and now uh, you guys are in for a treat. Jeff, again, thank you so much. Thank you both. Really enjoyed it. And uh, best of luck with this project of yours. And keep it going, man. Thank All the best. So and hope, hope actually one day in the not too distant future we'll be able to share a stage again. You know, if hopefully this gets a little better, you know, and the uh, time is coming up. But. Let's put it out there and make that happen. That's yeah. all. Yeah, that would like be that. great. Awesome. You're welcome to join County Line Road anytime. I love it. Oh, okay. Absolutely. <laughs>
everybody, I'm Jess and this is Bobby! And we love to have a good talk with Robin Eve and Donnie Vapor. We love you guys. Bye!